All right, welcome to Help Desk with Joe. This is show number 59, and with us, as always, Justin's joining, and we have an interesting show today. So, Joe, got a lot going on, and you're closing in on that big number 60. I know. We'll have to do something special. I don't know whether it's to up our game and actually act like we're semi-professional or just stay on course. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure either. It's kind of crazy, I, uh, and I don't know why. It just seems like every even number that's kind of like, decade 10 you know whatever the case may be just seems exciting like 50 was a big number because it's kind of you know bicentennial i guess but right and that seems to make sense but now i'm excited about 60 and i'm sure at 70 i'll be excited and of course 75 <laughs> it just seems like those are big numbers that you celebrate yeah i think it's just because nobody's kicked us off yet i think it's <laughs> is, that, is that what it is <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, got we, away with it again yeah we haven't been uh canceled by cancel culture yet so we're doing must be doing something right yeah that's a I was just like, okay, so 59, it's got me excited for 60, and we're still on 59. <laughs> but anyway, as always, Joe here with A&M Digital Technologies, doing lots of good stuff out in the community and keeping all our stuff here at Patch working. So, uh, Joe, you got an interesting deal today. You got a couple things. I mean, I, I've heard of a couple of these, of course, but I can't imagine how they tie into our conversations, but I'm sure you'll fill me in. But let's start with... Something I don't know anything about, I don't think, anyway. Okay. Parlor. You got a news update on Parlor. Yes, yeah, so if you watch the whole social media debacle, all going back as far as the election, yeah. Parlor was a new social media platform that was going to take the place of Facebook and Twitter and all this and that, and they wasn't going to censor you, and you was going to have the full freedom right to say whatever you want online <clears throat> and not be censored. So after the whole capital fiasco, yeah, the Apple and Google stepped in and said, "Yeah, we're pulling your app from our app stores because of all this." And then Amazon, who was hosting Parler's website, pulled the plug on it and said, "Yeah, we're not hosting you anymore." But right. if, if you are a fan of Parler, I had do have some good news. The Apple is going to reinstate the App Parlor app starting next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, the argument maybe was that people were using it to <coughs> plan this get together at the Capitol that turned out kind of ugly. Or yeah, yeah, that was the that was the. Uh, I got to be honest. I'm I'm saying I'm going to label that as treason. <laughs> right. Not <laughs> just a. Yeah, yeah, not a get together. Right. Not yeah. So when somebody gets killed, yeah, that's uh, four people or five or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Then that that turns and it's on the nation's capital. That's in my opinion. This is just my opinion. But yeah, that whole thing. That's yeah, a I mean, fiasco. They. So I don't know. I'm kind of. I don't know enough about it to know, like what Parler's role was. Because I mean, I'm sure they could have just texted each other. But I guess since that was kind of like mass media. Well, Parler was kind of self-proclaimed as a more conservative. Uh, view social media platforms. So that automatically put a bigger target on their back. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, so they said, yeah, well, I mean, we if can't they, have that. So. If they proclaim it, then they, they put their own target on their back. Right. Maybe but, a certain <clears throat> amount of like conspiratorial type messaging going on on there about so, well, stop the steal. And, yeah. So they got dropped by Apple and Amazon. What? How does Amazon tie into it? Am they was using their their website was hosted on Amazon's uh, servers called Amazon Web Services. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So they didn't have their own servers. Am they was paying Amazon. Right, they were just buying. Website. Okay. Yes. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, so Amazon's a business. They can do what they want to do. Right, so everybody just pulled the plug on them real quick and said, nope, you're not going to play by our rules. So it's kind of a... Yeah. It's one of those... Parlor yeah. claims not to have I, rules, but then there well, are I rules. Can, I can see both sides of the coin. I can see Parlor as a business saying, hey, you can't, you know, unless we're breaking a law here, you can't shut us down. But yet, on the flip side of that coin... Well, they didn't shut them down. They just denied their business. Right. To use their business. Right. Okay. So it, I can see both sides. I can see Parlor being in an uproar of like, you're silencing us, you're censoring us. But yet, I can see on the flip side of the coin, the company saying... Uh, yeah, you know, whether they did or not, I'm not getting in that discussion. Yeah. I kind of see it as just to take your business elsewhere. Right. But, and they can uh, buy servers themselves and host it, right? Right, but it, okay. but then it's kind of scary as to if you don't play by big tech's rules, 
you can literally be blackballed off the internet. Well, that happens in everything, though. I know, but so they yeah. did. They go somewhere else, and they got apparently they got a new server. They're not. I on mean, we side. forced the, apparently the U.S. government was forcing TikTok to sell their business, literally sell their business. Right. So I don't. In my opinion, that's kind of crazy to say we can force a business that's to be American or not exist here, but we can't. Let's tell a business to take their business elsewhere. Well, but that well, that's kind of two different things because that was a Chinese company trying to invest in Amer in using. Mm. I mean, so that's that's a whole other. I mean, I'm just saying, actually. capitalism's capitalism. You let the business roll, and businesses can deny other businesses business. Right. I mean, you can't make like I couldn't. I mean, I could, I guess. If we went with parlor's rules, then I could make you do business with me, even though. Yeah, I think you, you own your a, own business. You can make your own calls on that one. You right. got a good point, Dave, in that it's not like they're going out and trying to shut them down. They're just saying go somewhere else. Yeah, take basically. your business somewhere else. I mean, that's, that's we got to allow those businesses to have that right. That kind of feeds into folks that think big tech is just trying to, you know, impose a certain worldview on everybody. It oh, yeah. makes it on that end look like see they're trying to censor us. See, look at all this. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm for businesses, and I'm for business is having the right to do what they want with their business because it's their business. Right. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just a skewed opinion on my part. But Well, I mean... Like, I I, you know, if somebody walked in here and said, hey, Joe, you have to do this with your business, I'd be like, heck no, it's Joe's business. He can do what he wants with it. It's his right. business. Although, I think we all can agree on the fact of, as far as big tech goes, it is kind of scary on how they, in a sort of way, monopolize. They, well, see, they, they have anti-monopolization rules and but, laws. But they've gotten so big that yeah. they pretty much set their own rules. I mean, yeah. we've seen that. On that one, I, I think that's kind of sketchy, though, because, I mean, you've talked before about servers. You know, get your own servers. That's not that hard. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know what Amazon's actual written statement was as to... Yeah. Was there a certain rule they broke, or... Well, they... they from what I read, it was... They just kind of blanketed it as it was a violation of the terms of service. Yeah. yeah. But now they didn't go as far as, you know you know, rule 43 line B or whatever. They just kind of, I wonder why it's such a big deal. Like why wouldn't parlor just say, fine, we'll go to get our own servers or go somewhere else to get servers. Well, Well, that's what they finally did. Pulled the rug out of them right at like the height of all this (laughs) stuff around the election. Then suddenly millions of people potentially don't have this parlor app that that they were using yesterday. And then today they wake up and it's not there anymore. It was, it was just kind of bad timing all the way around because it was like, Parler, Facebook, and Twitter were in hot water for censoring the uh, individuals as well as news media up to and including the New York Post. See, I think the confusion is that's called, you're calling it censoring? Well, no, th- no, they actually did censor the New York Post. Well, I'm just saying... They, ba- they banned their account. Yeah, but I mean, as a business, you can choose not to do that. Right. Censoring's but, tell them they can't say it. They can well, go say it somewhere else. Okay, well, right, but yeah, yeah. when you're on the two biggest platforms to get but, your voice heard, I think that's that's yeah. the issue. It's like, yeah, you can stand in the scream, street and scream your head off. Yeah, I just mean that censoring in, is traditionally used as like the government's going to censor specific books because they don't believe in the ideology of it versus saying you can say it, just say it somewhere else. Does that make sense? Yes. So... You know, having somebody stand on your front lawn screaming obscenities, is it censoring if you tell them, hey, you just can't stand on my property, go over there on public property and do it? True. So that's that's not censoring, that's just... A... Well, I, w- I wonder how long until they get kicked off again. I mean, <laughs> Apple's putting them back on, but... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I just... It, it's a little weird that, yeah, that they would even reinstate them... Are, That's what's crazy to me. It, don't they foresee that this is going to get ugly again? We're going to slap you on the wrist? Okay, you're back in. Yeah, so apparently everybody, has, cooler heads have prevailed out of this, and uh, there's actually two lawmakers, Senator Mike Lee out of Utah and Ken Buck out of Colorado. They recently sent a letter to Apple asking for Parler to be re- reinstated in its app store. That's what I really like when politicians get involved. Yeah, they've always got the best insight. Yeah, <laughs> I, I always get a kick out of politicians that... Uh, get involved in education. I'm like, time out. Do you have a background in education? <laughs> Where, where's the knowledge you're basing this off of? And it's just on a whim. Well, it's kind of crazy. Alex Jones was one of those 
people who kind of was right in the center of, you know, potentially, I'm being censored because a certain platform is saying you can't be on our platform, go say it somewhere else. He got kicked off of YouTube and maybe Apple also. Uh, not, as far as I know, he's still kicked off of those. They're just like, nope, you can't come back sort of thing. Yeah, it's the just, Sandy Hook thing was kind of what that was the, that the was last straw for them was when he was saying Sandy Hook was a all big charade. The, yeah, big hoax. Yeah. So he claimed. So uh, Buck actually tweeted on Monday says today we received a response. Parlor will be reinstated on the App Store. Huge win for free speech. The letter they received from an Apple lobbyist. <laughs> <laughs> it's free speech if you don't let me say what I want to say in your business. That to me is crazy. But see, that's that's how the propaganda works nowadays. Yeah, that's why I just basically quit watching all news. Period. Oh, I, that's this is why I don't have TV because I just can't take it when someone says that's free speech. I'm like, if that's free speech, then I'm gonna come on your lawn and I'm gonna shout obscenities. Because now I have apparently the right to go on your property and say what I want. That's not free speech. Jeez. Yeah, that's why I just don't watch the news, period. Because yeah, I don't, I don't it's either d- dark or depressing or literally I can stand out. Here, here's how here's the would. problem, though, for me. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, Joe. But okay. we're better than that. That's the crazy part. I just think as, as people, we're just better than that. And you know what? That's why I love Rome County, though. Yeah, because we don't have these problems. Luckily, well, I just mean you know, Rowan County people are sensible. They're smart. You know, they respect each other's privacy and property. Right. For the most part, I mean, you know, you got you got dingbats here and there that are gonna right. cause a little bit of problems here. But for the most part, in Rowan County, by golly, if you break down, somebody will stop and help you. You know, if you own property, people leave you alone and let you do what you want on your property. Well, the, but the main, the, just yeah, the mainstream yeah, yeah. media, and I'm talking oh. all, all of it. Oh, yeah, all, yeah. It's across the board. Yeah, I can stand in my front yard and say, I love Pepsi, and, and I guarantee at least one of them go say, well, Joe McDonald said he hates Coke. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> I know. That's a... <laughs> Yeah. So the letter they received from an Apple lobbyist said the substantial conversations with Parler in an effort to bring the Parler app into compliance and pledges by Parler to make significant changes to how it moderates content led to last week's decision to readmit Parler when it submits a new app. Bring them into compliance. I, I like this. Parler's like, all right, we're no longer going to be unrestricted. We're going to have some restrictions. But you base your name on being unrestricted. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. It's yeah, crazy. So, and, and I don't have a dog in this fight. I've not been on the parlor at. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I talked to someone the other day who just went and tried, checked out the parlor app, and they said it was so political, it wasn't even funny. Yeah. So they just were like, yeah, I mean, I'm done. I just, I don't understand the whole argument. If you, you're that big about it, then come up with your own website and say what you want to say. Right. Your own website that you pay for and well, it's yours. Well, my thoughts were everybody's trying to find a new social media. Yeah. Whatever happened to MySpace? Yeah, go back to <laughs> MySpace is all music stuff. I think we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We looked it up. Was it last week or week? Yeah, before? yeah, a couple but weeks I ago. I thought, you know, dust off MySpace. Yeah, yeah, bring that baby great. back. Yeah. And literally, my there wasn't. It wasn't. Justin's MySpace. like, what the heck's MySpace? <laughs> oh no, no, we've had this discussion. <laughs> I know. Uh, literally, there was nothing wrong with MySpace. I mean, there was literally not. There wasn't anything that they did for people to just leave in droves. It was just one of those things that ran its course. They like, didn't hit the right market. Yeah. They didn't hit the college kids. Well, Facebook did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Facebook hit the college kids hard, and that's that was the right market at the right time. Yeah. And MySpace was more on older people that weren't technology ready yet. So it's like, let's knock off the dust off one for nostalgia value, two. <laughs> let's, let's throw a couple bucks MySpace's way and let's see. Let's go what retro. Happens. We're going to go retro. That's right. So that's all I have for Parlor. If you're a user of Parlor, get ready your app coming soon. It's coming back, baby. That's right. For a limited time, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a different message. We don't know. Yeah, good, bad, or ugly, it's coming. Yeah. That's funny. I don't know. Disclaimer. These are all everything I just said was all my opinions. <laughs> no no facts at all in that. At all. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, we we didn't really knock in. I mean, other than... Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just... I'm making statements about what I believe business should be. Right. Or could be or is by law, but I don't know. Right. I'm not a lawyer, so... And you don't play one on TV? I do not. 
So anyway, all right. So you got something about the FCC? Yes. What's new with the FCC? Speaking of the government, yeah, and laws. So the FCC here lately, something must be wrong because they've been doing a lot of good stuff here lately, and I'm starting to get scared, guys. To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it's always bad news where you're like, the government's doing smart things. Yeah, and I, and like these are simple things that make perfect sense. So I'm getting really scared. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're do a big oops. <laughs> yeah. So the FCC is going to start holding providers accountable for anti robocall efforts. So telephone, cell phone providers, the FCC is going to start holding them accountable for having anti robocall checks in place. So the 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 callers are trying to get around the anti robocall stuff somehow, and the FCC is going to make them follow the rules. Well, no, the this like the cell phone providers. Yeah. The FCC is going to make sure that they have something in place to help cut down the robocalls. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, robocalls that I get. A lot of times it's a similar number to yours. It'll be yeah, yeah. 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 So they're hitting local numbers where they're going through AT and T and yep, they got local numbers and yeah, yeah, yeah so, they rock and roll. It's crazy. Yeah, yes. maybe AT and T could have some sort of little well, program in place that would be like this is you obviously know, suspicious and you know who does have something in place. Uh, Samsung, Android, Android, yeah. I mean. Android yeah. users, yeah. yeah. Like I, Joe turned me on to the. What's that I, working for you? By the way, it's great. I don't get any spam calls. Yeah, isn't it nice? Yeah, I mean, I don't even see them. Yeah. So what was it called again? Google phone, the Google phone app. Yeah, the Google phone app. Like I, I literally don't see spam calls. I haven't seen them since I put that on there. Yeah, I remember that was like a month ago or so. You guys were talking about. Yeah, that and... yeah, yeah. So you Apple users, iPhone users. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about your luck. <laughs> Should have chose better whenever you bought yeah. your phone. The well, I can tell you. Yeah, a bunch you, of you blue. Made the wrong choice. A bunch of blue dotted people. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy and I had that same conversation here. She calls me a green dot because when I send him a text message, she says he comes green. in a green dot. So he could, yeah, you green dot people. So yeah. Well, I'm sure the cell phone providers are not gonna just. Uh, not too happy about having to shoulder this cost of whatever it's going to Well, be. actually, a lot of them have already started putting it in place just as mm -hmm. a courtesy to cut down on their customers calling and complaining, saying, hey, you got to do something. Well, I, I was going to say, if you got an Android, it's already there. Google yeah. took care of it for you. But a lot of the actual providers themselves have actually started doing this. So the FCC is introducing a new database that all voice providers will have to use to allow the agency to track the work they're doing to stop robocalls. So starting on September 28th, phone companies will be required to block any incoming traffic from providers not listed in the robocall mitigation database. In particular, any companies that have an ex extension to implement the what they call the stir slash shaken protocol allows a carrier to verify caller ID before it reaches the intended recipient will have a file detailed reports with the agency on their progress towards putting the technology in place. Nice. So the majority of the carriers have until June 30th to turn on stir, stir and shaken, but uh, in September the FCC gave smaller companies, particularly those running uh, non-IP networks, limited extensions. So uh, let me see. So it can feel like the FCC in public is in a constant losing battle against spam calls, but positive changes could be on the horizon. Under Jessica Rosenwar <laughs> Rosenworkel or Rosenworcel, the agency recently issued the biggest fine in its history. Two Texas telemarketers will have to pay the FCC $225 million for making approximately $1 billion robocalls across the U.S. Wow. Rosen Warsaw also recently formed the Robocall Response Team that will work on new policies and initiatives to stop spam callers. Two hundred and twenty five million? million? Yes. That went to the FCC. Yes. Shouldn't it go to those people that uh, got bothered by all the robocalls? Then I would have a big check coming my way. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I mean. <laughs> Just goes back to the FCC, huh? Yeah. Well, they better start using that money to stop the problem. Well, maybe they're going to use that money to help uh, pay for the RDOF broadband expansion. Hopefully. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting with the FCC. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, their initiative on expanding broadband, and now they're yeah. helping uh, stop robocalls. I'm getting scared, guys. Hey, it's about time the government got kicked into gear here. 
Now, if we can get our infrastructure and roads going, we'll be all right. We'll be along. The roads are rough right now. Oh, yeah. I'm starting to really worry. Yeah, Mom and Dad tried to take their camper up to their campground week before last. And literally, I texted them said, yeah, don't go on 14 because they're going to start construction tomorrow. Ooh. And then they sent, and then Cena remember that big slip on 33. So she yeah. sent me those pictures said, yay, look at 33. <laughs> oh, yeah, 33 is half the road's gone and still going. Yeah. That's our main road in and out. So exactly. for those that aren't familiar, 33 is the main road in and out for the most part. And uh, so they approved the the Scott Miller Hill bypass. But I'm thinking now they should have like approved something that said, let's fix the six slips. Yeah. That's uh, got the road almost down to one lane. Yeah, because it's going to be a while before we can use the new, new bypass. Yeah, the bypass is great and all, but if you can't get to it. Anyway. So, yeah, hopefully infrastructure will... Get a little reboot. Be nice to see our roads get improved. So, what do you guys think about the FCC doing this? I don't. Uh, so again, as usual, I'm talking about stuff I don't know about. <laughs> so, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. But I mean, I, I'm I'm glad that they're stopping the robocalls. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't see them anyway. So, I mean, I guess it's good. For people like Justin that have iPhones that don't yeah. know what <laughs> or they're missing, or people with uh, landlines, uh, yeah, I guess older folks that Do you might get, get called scammed. landlines, yeah, oh, all yeah. the time, oh yeah, yeah, huh. yeah our okay. business phone rings off the hook, really, yeah. So I have a I have the cell phone landline phone. They don't call your office phone, uh, no, really, huh? Well, That's you're nice. lucky. Yeah. Well, let's let's fix that. Spammers <laughs> call. Time out. <laughs> Call Joe first. <laughs> Too late, they already are. And then and we'll work backwards from there. <laughs> Justin, give me your cell phone number. <laughs> Ow. Ch- yeah. uh, Alexa, okay, volume just... high. Play, uh, what was it? What's lunatic Fringe. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Alexa, Lunatic Fringe, volume high. I actually had an Alexa story last night. I was going to read it, and I was going to cover I was like, no, because then I'll interfere with, with Dave's bit so i'll just leave it be <laughs> <laughs> is it a fix to that no it was you can actually use your echo dot now to help you find covid19 vaccination sites oh wow nice yeah how do you uh, get echo to activate well you just say alexa oh, okay and alexa then... lunatic fringe volume high there you go i'm just fixing everybody up today <laughs> Yeah, and if you don't have any of those, just go over to your computer and uh, put on Lunatic Fringe, turn it up high. Turn it up. So they that way you won't be left out. That's right. We don't want anybody left out. I mean, they're dumping a lot of money into it. I wonder. I mean, hopefully it works. Hopefully it's not just a bunch of money <laughs> thrown at it. That, yeah, I mean, that, it'd be a shame to take $225 million yeah. and then not actually have a result come. Yeah. Right. Which, you know, I wouldn't be surprised because that's government how it works. But. Right. But it, it'll be interesting. We'll... Yeah. Yeah, keep tabs on it. And like I say, if you're if you're an Android user, call Joe and help have him help you out and get the Google The Google yeah. Google the phone. Google phone app. Google phone app is awesome. Yeah, I don't even get them. If you're an Apple user, throw it away and <laughs> <laughs> switch to Android. Switch over. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quit messing around. So well, you can't do the Google phone on Apple? Not at this point, no. Yeah. Well you can actually yeah. get a hold of your carrier and uh a lot of them already have stuff in yeah. place, but someone will actually flip a switch on that'll help cut it down. Yeah. Sorry about your luck, Justin. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Just keep answering those spam calls. Yep. And give him Dave's number. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So the last news update's about Geico. Yes. Yeah, so do either of you guys use Geico? Nope. Nope. I stay local. My All local right. guy. Perfect. Keith Kirby. Shout out to Keith Kirby. Hey, Keith. I, uh, I I stay local as well, so, we so got, we're yeah. all safe on this one. Yeah, I mean, we, we're a small town, small rural West Virginia town here in Spencer, West Virginia, and, uh, you know, we got really good insurance agents. So, good, if good you, group of people. If you use Geico's website, be careful. Yeah. Hackers, uh, Geico has filed a data breach notice with the California Attorney General's office because uh, supposedly... Hackers have stolen driver's license numbers from the Geico website. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. So, Geico is admitting to 
that fraudsters had stolen customers' driver's license numbers from its website. In a notice discovered by TechCrunch, the American auto insurance titan said that from January 21st to March 1st of this year, bad actors infiltrated its website using information on its customers that they acquired elsewhere. They then accessed the victim's driver's license information through the website's online sales system. So here's what they're afraid of. They're afraid that these bad guys are going to use that information to either steal their identity or file false unemployment. Mm, yeah. Scams galore. Yes. So, huh. and now I'm going to steer us a little off the path here, and this is pure assumption on my part, but when they say that these people infiltrated the website information using customer information on this customer they acquired elsewhere, that typically means that they've gotten their login information from somewhere else, hence why we talked about Have I Been Pwned a couple of weeks ago, and never to use your same password on all your websites because stuff like this can happen. If there were an easy program, I would use it. Um, LastPass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not, not a sponsor, That was a nice slow pitch for you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. weird. It's almost like you've mentioned that to me several times. Yeah. I just got an email that there's a parking app I was using where you just pull up and it has a little number on the space, put it on the app and say, start the timer or parking space. And that just got Where's this work infiltrated at? recently in Morgantown. Okay, I was going to say, so, I, I just put a quarter in our meter yeah. downtown yesterday, and I didn't see anything said about <laughs> using an app. Yeah, they just got an email that a bunch of, uh, like, drivers, lights, or, uh, like, the plates on cars, the numbers on there have been yeah. compromised, and there's a big hack on that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like Spencer. You just yeah. slap your nickel, dime, or quarter in there, and bam, yeah, good to not, go. Not too much of a security threat using a quarter. That's the way yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it gives somebody a job. Somebody's got to go around and check those meters, and somebody's right. got to go around and empty those meters. So, yeah. there we go. Yeah, I like it. Small towns at work. So if you I'm on a roll today, shop local. Yep. You are. How about that? You? Shop, shop local. Boo to big government and boo to people trying to tell you what to do with your own business. Yeah, if you've got a printer that. Is on the fritz. Maybe uh, Ooh, drop did, it off at A and M Digital Tech. They get fixed. That's what my dad. Oh did yeah, last we, week and... yeah. I need to give you an update on that all fair. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. All right, maybe hold on that. Drop the printer off. It now. might not be able to be salvaged, but <laughs> maybe consider it. But but we'll d be more than happy to take a look at it and at least give you the diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> give you the. the bad <laughs> Sounds news. bad for your printer, Justin. <laughs> Sit down. I got, some, got some news for you. No need to talk off air. That sucker's. <laughs> Yeah, done and done. Whatever you put in it, yeah. that pop tart got really stuck. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying, I don't yeah. know why you're trying to print on it, but it just trying to make a copy of a pop tart. Yeah, it yeah. just jammed everything up. You're in trouble. Well, it was uh, the cherry filling, so it was jammed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, all right. So before we get canceled, all this, <laughs> if you are a Geico a customer, it may not hurt to get a hold of Geico today and say. Hey, was I compromised, or what do I need to do, or yeah. what's going on? Yeah, call if you're Geico, call your insurance agent. Yep, get last pass. It's kind of crazy. This will be my pitch for local businesses. If I had any kind of issue, I'd just call Keith Kirby, call my local agent. He's right here. He's local. Yep. I could so, really, hey. I could drive the two minutes down and just say hi. Yeah. <laughs> in person. And actually see a person. Is yeah, yeah. Person. That's yeah. what I mean. I, I, I understand people are like, yeah, but I'll save ten dollars, whatever. Whatever you save, for me, it is so nice to be able to just, you know, zip downtown here, which we're almost, we're downtown, but, right. you know, drive the mile and... Put a quarter in the meter. Put a quarter in the meter, yeah. whatever the case is, and actually talk yep. to somebody. Right. I mean, you know. Well, and I, and I found that the local agents, it, they, they have to know more, so they do know more. Oh, yeah. So then you don't with these big companies 800 numbers call trees that yeah. are endless and relentless and then you just get one person that's literally reading from a script oh yeah you go in and talk to your local agent of whatever carrier you, you have talk to your local agent and and they're and they know their stuff they're right on top you don't have to go oh, yeah. through this yep. hoops of well I don't know let me talk to somebody it's oh yeah da, 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 yeah be done in a few minutes and you're literally correct like I, I wanted to add coverage or increase the coverage on our one car we're driving more 
and just stopped in, talked to Keith, and he did it on a computer while I stood there. He's right. like, all right, done and done, two minutes later. Right. I was like, my gosh, that's so nice, because if I had to call somebody, like you said, go through the phone tree, I'd be an hour on the phone. Right. Yeah. And then your day, it just uh, brings your day down a little bit when you got to sit there and deal with it. It's right. just craziness. Yeah. So, yeah, pay a little more, get local. That's right. That's right. You know, and all our all our people here, for the most part, all our people locally have kids in the system and, you know, paying taxes and everything. So, yeah, I like it. Helping each other I like out. small rural towns. Yeah. That's my kick today. I'm not bashing big businesses. I'm supporting local small rural. Helping the little guy. Yeah, little towns. And on behalf of all the little guys out there, we thank you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, it's kind of crazy. It's crazy when uh, everything gets so big that, you know, then it becomes a whole hullabaloo. Right. So, anyway. So, speaking of big, do you guys want to talk about this week's topic? Hold on. Let's back up. Okay. I, I want to know, is the com- is the printer already in the trash pile, or is it debatable? Well, it's not mine, so I can't put, technically put it in the trash pile. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to give it back to Justin, so you can go put it in the trash pile. Pull no. like a uh, office space and just beat it. <laughs> beat it with a ball bat. Yeah. Stupid <laughs> printer! Can't believe you stopped working. Can't believe they don't make parts for you anymore. That's yeah, funny. You said it was your dad's printer, though, right? Yeah. So, are you guys going to take turns with the ball bat, or are you going to let him? No, we'll, we'll just do it. And I'll send him a video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got the news on your printer. Check yeah. us out. Yeah. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> By the way, here's how Amazon works. <laughs> or here's Joe's yeah, number here's so you Joe's can number. you can order a new one off of him. Yeah. I know. I just sit there and root it for a small business, and then my first go-to joke is Amazon. Oh, dude. I know. So, yeah. By the way, let me fix it. All right. Here's the correction. By the way, here's Joe's number. A&M will have you a new printer tomorrow. Yep. Oh, now, now, time out, guys. You're asking an awful lot with, with COVID shipping to... Get it overnight. Oh, the, the printers are probably on that Suez Canal boat. Oh. Yeah. That's the excuse for everything. It's so funny, though, because I run into people, and I'm like, hey, where's this at? And they're like, oh, probably Suez Canal. <laughs> well, because... I'm like, dad, go on. Well, because the COVID excuse is starting to die off, Yeah. yeah. thankfully. <laughs> yeah. So we had to go with a plan B. It's kind of crazy. It's so funny, though. It's kind of like the your mama jokes. Yeah. They never get old. <laughs> Where's my pencil? Suez Canal. <laughs> Be here in two months. <laughs> that, and that was on Prime. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just thinking, like, the pencil on my literal desk. Yeah. Where's my pencil here? I'm looking around, and, yeah, Suez Canal. <laughs> but have they ever decided yet on who's going to be at fault on that? Because I know they keep... I don't watch the news. I check out Yahoo, you know, yeah. during the day here at work, front page of Yahoo. The last account I heard, they was trying to throw the blame on one lady for not steering the boat right and she wasn't even on the boat <laughs> really <laughs> yeah. wow yeah well i know they were they had them parked and they were holding them hostage so to speak the egyptian government that's in charge of suez canal was holding them hostage but the problem was the crew was from like india and the yeah. boat's a- owned by like a japanese company yes yeah, so it, yeah that was and this whole... is just a conversation we we're having so i don't know if any of that's fact but no that's that's what i heard because they was trying to figure out who was going to pay for that whole mess so that's why they was holding the boat hostage. And then they were trying to find somebody to blame, so they tried to blame one woman, and she wasn't even on the boat. So I don't know how that works, but that's just me. I'm not yeah. I'm not the smartest guy in the room and don't claim to be. Oh, yeah, I'm nowhere near that, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, circling back around. <laughs> All right, we've had her two minutes. Yep. Justin getting her hit the mute button. Yep, I've got a little buzzer button right here. <laughs> Oh, we should get you one of those staples. That was easy yeah. and just mod the sound Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh. something else. Yeah. Back on topic, please. Back on topic button. All right. So, Apple event. So, this is why Justin's trying to get us back on topic. He's wanting to know how much money he's getting ready to spend. Yep, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> so, Apple had a big keynote announcement yesterday and announced uh, several new products, and we're going to go discuss all these in detail. And we're just going to get down to the bare bones, what you actually need to know about these new devices and gadgets and all that, instead of giving you just uh, the fluff of Apple and instead of giving you the quick 30-second blip on the news, we're going to give you what you need to know. I'm going to take a nap because I don't have Apple stuff. <laughs> you guys wake me up when we get there. Yeah, but you can help me uh, rag on Justin a little bit. I was going to say, yeah, I can always jump in on giving Justin a hard time. There we go. <laughs> all right, so first up, 
is the first device they announced was the new iMac 24 inch. So this is Apple's desktop version for you non-Apple fans out there. This is their desktop PC. It's going to be a 24 inch all in one. And their big uh, sale is it's going to come in colors. So the color choices are wow. blue, green, pink, silver, yellow, orange, and purple. And what is this? It's the new iMac, the, the desktop. Oh, okay, all okay, in okay. One. Didn't they already have colors? Not like this. Okay. I remember back. Not yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know, when they was the, had the old big CRT, the big honking. Yeah, yeah it kind of looked like it was hollow, but yeah. you know, had the okay. Yeah, yeah. That we're back to colors, huh? Yeah, you're going in the way back machine on that one, Dave. That By was, golly. Well, you know. I think that was about two thousand. <laughs> if you're gonna pay more for something because it's Apple, then you might as well get some color with it. Is That's that what right. we're saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, it makes it new. Makes yeah. it new. Ah, yeah. new and improved. Yeah, here's some. A, here's some color in your plastic. Yeah, we got a fresh paint of coat on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Justin. <laughs> no, I, I don't use the computers, just the phone. So it's going Windows to Windows Man all, all the way. Ah, uh, there forever. you go. Yep. So it, it's going to weigh less than ten pounds, and now here nine point eight probably. Probably. Okay. <laughs> so here are some of the features that they're going to have now. All these features aren't available on all the models, so depending on which model you get will depend on which features you get. So they're going to have a Thunderbolt connector, USB-C. The display is going to be a 4.5K Retina display. It's going to have a 1080p FaceTime camera, uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet, depending on which model you get. And also, depending on which model you'll get, it'll actually have a Touch ID keyboard. Like a thumbprint yep. thing? Yep. Okay. And then one of the features they're touting is you can link it with your iPhone for AirDrop to handle calls and messages. And then here's what's really neat. You can use the copy and paste feature from your iPhone to your Mac. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice feature. Yeah, it's one of those I didn't think, I didn't realize that was a need, but that's pretty cool either way. Mm-hmm. And the airdrop thing, too. just Yeah, that's going to be a big game changer there. Yeah. And prices. Okay, so we're going to play a little prices right here, guys. Oh, boy. So starting out, what do you think the starting out price is going to be on this? Oh, jeez. Uh, 1600 I'm terrible at this game. No, fi- $1,500. No. <laughs> 60 I'm going to stick with 16 Yep. Okay, 1600 Ding. <laughs> I'm going to say 1800 1800 Just because it's got color, so okay. they can charge more. <laughs> starting out, the starting price is $1,299. Ah, oh, man. Is that good? So we both went over. I yeah, guess. that's not bad. Now, I don't know. I mean, is that, well, how would you, it, just off the cuff here, how does that compare to like $1,200 worth of a Windows type machine? Uh, HP or anything like that? It's still. Well, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges on that one. I mean, as far as a Windows PC for $1,200, that's a pretty good chunk of money as well, and you can get a lot of bells and whistles on the Windows PC. Yeah. So you can get a high-end Windows PC for 1200 or you can get the starting model of a Apple product at $1,200. Hmm. Or I want to ask you what your opinion would be. Like, if I came to you and said, listen, I got 1200 to spend, mm-hmm. which direction would you point me in? Well, the first thing I would ask you is, would what you are say, you using currently? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, what color do you like? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'd ask you, what are you using currently? What do you plan on using this for? And then that would help us steer down the path I got of you. Yeah. Apple or So Mac. it's never just as easy as I got money to spend, and this is what you should have. No, I mean, unless you just... Want to blow money and you just give me twelve hundred bucks and say hey, I want anything but Microsoft and then we'll talk and then we'll have a discussion. Yeah, gotcha. But, hmm. Interesting. So twelve hundred ninety nine dollars starting out will get you the new iMac. So hmm. the next product they discussed was the iPad hmm. Pro, and they are, they're going to have two new models of the iPad Pro: eleven inch screen and a twelve point nine inch screen, and it's going to have options for Wi Fi and five G. It's going to include a 12 megapixel camera, and it'll also have the unlock with Face ID like you have with your iPhones. Color options, one uh, white or black. Wow. Yeah, yeah. White or black. Yeah. All right. Fancy. 
So the storage is going to start out at anywhere from 128 gig all the way up to 2 terabyte. Wow. So you can get a 2 terabyte iPad. For a while it seemed like, I mean, weren't the, some of the early iPads had like no storage in them? Yeah, whatsoever? like like 32 gig was yeah. big. What do you need 2 terabytes on an iPad for? A lot of people like a lot of movies. photo, yeah, photo designers uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, photos, their, movies, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, this is their computer. Super they, high. Gotcha. I can see that because they they video a lot of like soccer games and stuff with mm -hmm. iPads. Yeah. Hmm. And then a lot of photo editing and stuff like that. It's kind of amazing on how the iPad has grown over the years from just a media consumption device to a media creation device. Yeah, more of a tool. Yeah, and in this Pro series, that's why the, you had the bigger screen and. Is there a Windows version of that? Yeah, they have. Uh, oh, you asked me too quick, Dave. But yeah, Microsoft has their tablet version. And I'm assuming some other. I want to say Android, but yeah, yeah, Android has tablets. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, one time I was in Best Buy, I was just like overwhelming in the tablet section. I mean, there were like twenty different ones, yeah. like five, six different brands. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I'm not in the market for this because it'd be a lot of researching. Figuring out yeah. what I want. But for some people, that's like the why they like Apple. They don't have to think about it. Oh, give me Apple. Yeah, you have two options and the Surface Pro, that's Microsoft's yeah. version of it. And I assume even if you got a two terabyte, the dimensions are going to be the same. It's not going to be thicker or anything. Everything's no. still going to be streamlined. And yeah, it's thin. still going to be the, the, same, the same size regardless of the storage size. Now, I wonder what those iPads, I assume they're just as fragile as the phones like glass screen that if you were to drop one it'd be bad news yeah that's why you'd always yeah. get a get a good case for it mm -hmm. and it's kind of crazy one of my friends their son has one and it come they got a case that goes around it that looks like a kid's yes toy yes it's all rubber so it really protects it well yeah yeah, Sadie's, got handles, you can really hold it. Sadie's Kindle Fire has what they call a kid case on there, and yeah. I tell you what, that thing has held up. <laughs> nice. Taking some, uh, some it's, taking, it's taking a couple bumps. Yep. <laughs> hmm. So Interesting. Okay, so you guys want to play prices right on this one? Oh, man, oh, I think geez. this is going to be... For the 2 terabyte? Yeah, well, uh, anywhere. Any, let's, so, go with the, uh, let's try to guess the, the high-end the, the, one. Okay. I will say two grand. Yeah. Okay, for the high-end? Yeah. I'll go eighteen hundred. Okay, where do you think the starting point's going to be? For the uh, to the cheaper one? Yeah, 900. for the cheapest one. Nah, it won't be under a thousand. I don't think. I'm going to say twelve. Okay, so starting out, the cheapest one will be seven hundred ninety nine dollars. No, that's not bad. And the highest one will be twenty three ninety nine. Hmm. That's for the two terabyte with cellular and Wi Fi. Yeah. And the twelve inch screen. Twenty four hundred so bucks. Know? About what this size is? What's a twelve inch like? Smaller uh, than this? It, right? Yeah, because that one's a fifteen point six. Fifteen. Okay. So it's gonna be just a, sm a hair smaller. Yeah. Twenty four hundred bucks. <laughs> yes, for an iPad. Yep. I mean, people use them a lot for a lot of different things. So I could. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd like to say yeah. On the go but, all the time, and I mean, how things. much is a Surface Pro? Well, you can get in that. Price range right now. I'm looking at one at nineteen hundred, a thousand dollars. So I mean, it's right in yeah, there. Yeah, so it's about point. the same then. Yeah. Okay. Craziness. So next up, the iPhone 12, and just like the iPad, this model is going to have two different screen options. You're going to have a 5.4 inch screen or the 6.1 inch screen, and they're touting. Black or white? <laughs> now we have we have colors. Oh, okay, good. Uh, this one. They are claiming they have improved their drop protection. They've improved uh, their splash resistance. And it's going to come in purple. And they're really touting you can get it in purple now. That's their big selling point. You can get it in purple, blue, green, red, okay, or white. I'm listening now. All right. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So, price is right, guys. How much? Oh. 1800 1800 Dave? For the high-end one. Well, now we're starting out. Oh, starting out? Yeah. Starting at, I gotta go like fourteen. Eight. Oh, that that high, fourteen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it that's, is. That's uh, right yeah, you're high. right. You can't get anything. Uh, I don't know. You can't get anything under a thousand anymore. So I'm gonna say twelve hundred. Yeah, I think twelve hundred sounds. Okay, more. you guys <laughs> way overshot on this one. <laughs> really? Starts out at six hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh boy. Of 
course, you know, comes with the improved camera and all that. So it's one of those. It's an automatic given that has a better camera and all that. So I'm not gonna sit there and go through all that. So yeah. new iPhone 12 starting at $699. So the the next gadget they talked about is kind of neat. I'm anxious to see how this one goes. And Justin, if anybody will use one out of the three of us, you'll pro you you might find this one useful. Okay. This a uh, watch. No. Oh, okay. It's called the Apple AirTag. Ah, for when you lose your device? Uh, no, you actually, it's a super easy way to track your stuff. So you can attach it to your keys or uh, put it in your backpack. And just like that, they're on your radar with the Find My App. And you can actually track down your, it'll actually also help you track down your Apple devices. So mm -hmm. if you... Because you are you you go always hit the back roads around here and the in the trails and, and do runs. So let's say you drop your keys along the way. Ah, you can, that's for you, your keys. Yeah, you can put this okay. air tag on there, and use your phone to point you in the right direction to track down your keys. Yeah. Or if you left your phone somewhere in the house, you can actually use the air tag itself to call home on your phone to help you find your phone inside your house as well. So they can help find each other. Okay. They make a little gizmo, right? That you just like clap or something. That if it was in your house, what's it do? It just makes a little beeping sound. Or yeah. Not? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm more worried about finding my phone. <laughs> yeah, find your phone, then you can find whatever, whatever you're missing on top of that. Right. But yeah, so starry price on this, guys. What do you guys think? Oh, jeez. Uh, one twenty. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. And, and keep in mind, it's just a little device that you attach to, like your to some. So it's kind of like a fob, or, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it, 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 yeah. Uh, I'd say fifty bucks. Twenty nine dollars. Wow, okay, that's not bad. That's wise level deals there. Yeah, and, or you can buy a four pack for a hundred bucks. Okay. So you can. Uh, so it'll help you keep strap onto my kid. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And the last device they announced is a new Apple TV 4K. It'll come with a new Siri remote. You can use your iPhone as well as a remote control. It'll be compatible with HomeKit, so that means you can actually use it to help control your thermostat, your camera, stuff like that. And one thing I saw was you can actually view, use the Apple TV to view your cameras live on your TV, and I, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and it'll actually do AirPlay as well, so you can AirPlay from your phone straight to the TV. Starting car stole this one, guys. What do you think? Man, I've been so off on the last two. I tell um, same way. I don't know. Uh, I'd say two ninety nine. Okay, <laughs> Dave. One fifty. Starting at one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Yeah, we split there it there. Yeah. There you go. Huh. Yeah, maybe I just have it in my head that Apple products are more expensive than they are because oh, I've, no, I've no. been overshooting all these. No, you're you're right on par. Apple does uh, appreciate their stuff really well. Yeah, I'm just some of these prices actually surprised me because it wasn't too awful long ago that you know they was having iPhones start out at a thousand bucks. When I seen this yep. one start at six ninety nine, I remember when I first heard that that was just kind of a mind blower. Like yeah. someone would spend a thousand dollars on a phone, but it's so common now yeah before i looked at the price last night i was right in the same realm with you guys on these prices i was thinking right along the lines of you guys it's like okay this is going to be this and this is going to be this and it's like yep. yeah the air tag surprised me when it said it was 29 bucks i figured it was going to be at least 50. yeah so wow. all right fellas so interesting so dave i'm going to go to you first oh boy that, since you're not an apple user yeah is was there anything in the lineup that you go, ooh, that might be interesting? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I have zero interest in any of that. Okay, so Justin, being an Apple or an iPhone user, uh, is there anything that piqued your interest? Well, like the newest phone being under a thousand. I mean, if, if this phone dies on me, that's something I'd be interested in. Okay, you but wouldn't you wouldn't switch to Android now. <laughs> <laughs> you must really like those spam calls. Do you have some interesting conversations? But I assume that lower end one is probably has very little internal storage. It's probably I think it's like one hundred twenty eight gig. I mean oh, I, okay. it's nothing worth sneezing at. Okay, all right. Let me look here real quick. Let me make sure I'm I'm not making this uh, talking out of turn here. I can see it now. 
for me, it'd be one track meet or soccer game later and be like, yep, you're out of storage space. Yeah. Too many videos and photos of kids playing sports. You have used all your data. <laughs> now, granted, these are full retail price. You know, if you're buying one from a carrier, you might be able to get one cheaper. They have some deals going on. Hmm. Yeah, I've never been <clears throat> a tablet user. Not just never really. Uh, yeah, we tried for a while, so. but I, don't, I just don't like them. Oh, uh, okay. So I like typing better. So an iPhone. So the cheapest way to do this will be the iPhone 12, and getting it through your carrier, and it'll be a 64 gig model. Mm -hmm. Now, if you buy it unlocked, like I always do, it'll be seven hundred twenty nine dollars. So you mm -hmm. to get it to buy it straight from your carrier will be six hundred ninety nine dollars, but to get it unlocked will be seven hundred twenty nine dollars. Yep. Okay. And and in my opinion, that's just a jerk move to keep you locked into a carrier. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. Still, 64 gigs, not bad. Yeah. I'd jump up to at least 120 gig, but that's yeah. just me. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, anybody with kids is going to blow through videos and photos of their kids doing stuff. Right. Eat that up in a hurry. I mean, I don't even know how much mine has, but it's got a lot. So, Justin, if you get the new iPhone, are you going to spring for the extra $29 for the uh, Apple uh, tag? I've Air actually tag. never... Ran into that issue, not that I wouldn't ever in my life, but that doesn't happen to me ever. To uh, never say never. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although, I, I may have a surprise for you guys. When I read this last night, I was like, ooh, because Cena just tried out a product yesterday that I may be testing, and I may actually need your guys' input on. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to the WADS website right now. <laughs> no, WADS doesn't have it, so oh, unfortunately. Okay. I was going to say, they're releasing something new, although they do have a smart dimming task lamp. Yeah, they just announced that last week. Yeah. But my next big purchase is going to be that uh, truck, that little wise truck they have. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. Hmm. I still need to get the, uh, oh shoot, the thermostat. You still haven't gotten a thermostat? I haven't ordered it. I'm a tight Well, of course, wide. no, I haven't reviewed it either, so. I'm a tight wide, so, you know, I don't. I don't go for the new. Yeah, and I, and I don't have a good review on it. That's the problem. Yeah, Joe, there you go. Well, yeah, but the, I justified the cost of the thermostat is it's a whole lot cheaper than anybody else. Smart thermostats plus the, the savings on your heating and cooling bills justify it. Wise car. Here we go. I'm looking at it, Joe. Huh. Interesting. All 5,000 Wise cars have been assigned to agents. Yeah, so pre-orders sold out quickly, apparently. By golly. Yeah, and yes, we will be testing that if I get one. <laughs> the pre-order pre of limited to 5,000 units, they are gone. <laughs> Jeez. But it does look pretty cool. Yeah. I was talking to my cousin... About it, I sent it to him, and he's big in RC stuff. And he goes, "Oh yeah," and he said, "Those are the same parts as an existing RC brand." So I, was, I thought, "Cool." So then, if I break something, it won't be hard to. Yeah, probably parts. like a Traxxas. They look like Traxxas rims. They make a Traxxas slash at little truck. Because yeah, I knew you was in the RC. Yeah, we did that for a while. So I, I knew you'd be excited. And then for this Justin and I, it's just something new to play with. So An electric-powered one, I assume? Gets oh, better yeah. powered, yeah. Yep. Have you seen those ones, Dave, that are like gas-powered? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they used to run on nitro. Yeah. yeah. What I think's funny is the roll bar doesn't cover the camera. True, I never gave that a, I never looked, never gave that a thought. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, fellas. So that is all the news and information I Not have for info this week. There. Yeah, I know. I'm still I'm still on the Wise web website looking at the Wise car, <laughs> which is funny. They call it a car. It's a truck. It's got big tires, big suspension. It's a truck. Yeah, it is a truck. Wise car sounds a little better though. Yeah. Instead of Wise truck. 
still cool regardless. It is cool. I like it. Yeah, and I think I've seen them when they pre-sold them. So, of course, now the price may differ. But the wife's collar was like 50 or 60 bucks. I don't know. From what I read, it, was it doesn't one, really have a price on here. Well, I think the pre-orders were like fifty bucks. So it was one of those. It was well within my range of like, yeah, <laughs> now I need to, this. So well within your range of you still got to ask Cena, but yeah, forty nine ninety nine when they sold the first five thousand. Still cheaper than yeah, <clears throat> buying any of the others. I mean, for what I'd be using it for. I don't need some big racer. I, I'm just going for tinker and toy and get a little headlight on it. You could do a night ride yeah. with it. Ooh. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. It looks like a little Mars rover or something almost. Hmm. You know the wise thermostat. Looks only... like it would just tip over though if you got one up on the side or something. Only sixty bucks. Ah, eh, you just drive faster. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> okay. Well. I was going to wrap us up, but I was about to sneeze. <laughs> Still might. So get last pass. Uh, throw your iPhone away. I heard what else? <laughs> wrap it up here. If you're on uh, whatever the name, what was the name of the first parlor, one? Parlor, yeah. Parlor, yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you're trying to use Parlor, it might make its way back. Yeah. And if you have Geico, call them today and see if somebody's trying to, uh, has stolen your information. Stolen your driver's license? Yeah. And if you don't even want to do that, just cancel Geico and go with your local agent. There you go. Yeah. Always, always a win. Yeah. All right. Well, we're here in Spencer, West Virginia, and uh, Joe A&M Digital Technologies. If anybody has any questions on anything we talked about today, especially my opinions, uh, <laughs> how can they get a hold of you? <laughs> uh, okay. Please, if you have opinions on Dave, leave those online. Please do not call our office with your opinions on Dave. Don't even put them online. Yeah. Just keep them to yourself. <laughs> keep them to yourself. Let's make everybody happy here. Let's do the smart thing. There you go. You can give us a call at our office at 304-927-3588. Check out our website at amdigitaltechnologies.com. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at AM Digital Tech for all that. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Help Desk with Joe or Dave and Joe. And uh, we're on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, all your favorite podcast platforms hosted by Anchor.fm. Yeah. So, you know, as always... Big props out for uh, A&M Digital Technologies, Joe and Cena. And Cena doing all the hard work behind the scenes. Joe's just the pretty face. Yeah, let's call it that. Yeah. <laughs> Got a face for radio, Joe. That's right. Yeah. That's why we're doing podcasts. Yeah, I know. That's, we found our media niche finally. There we go. Got us off a of video and, uh, and in the dark where nobody can see us. <laughs> <laughs> doing good stuff. But yeah, A&M Digital Technologies here in Spencer, West Virginia, doing business locally, regionally, and uh, all of, wherever needed. So... Uh, Keep them in mind. And again, you know, I've been shouting out a lot today about local businesses, and that's that's always my habit, though. Just support those local businesses. And if you need any computer, cell phone, anything, any technology-related work, remember Joe and Cena there at A&M Digital Technologies. Get a hold of them. And we'll be back with more. This is show 59 here at the Patch Studio in Spencer, West Virginia. The patch turned up. And uh, we'll be back next week with more. And uh, next week, Joe? Yeah. Is that when you said you were going to have something that we could product review? I may have it to you, but uh, we probably won't review it next okay, week. Okay, so a couple of weeks. But anyway, yeah. as always, stay tuned for those technology news updates that are important to everybody, consumers, businesses, and the like. And uh, Joe will be back with more. we got Justin here. So for myself, Joe, and Justin, thanks for tuning in and watching, and we'll be back next week with more. <laughs>